One thing I found interesting is that some of the issues with the old guard don't exist with the new generation of players. You know, that new wave that is coming in all will, I believe, change and turn the page in the way that superstardom and the league is received in some senses because Caitlin Clark was the disruptor and then the Calvary is coming in Paige Beckers and Juju Watkins and others. And, you know, it's funny because Paige and Juju have been positioned as foes for Clark, really by Clark haters who are just looking for something. You know, they lost Angel. They couldn't really prop that up anymore. Um, and maybe they overcompensated with, with Asia, but Asia had already been there and already done that. She'd already proven herself. So that didn't really make sense against a rookie. And regardless, the, the next thing is, okay, Juju is going to be better than Caitlin. Or Paige is everything we wish Caitlin was. And that's not to take anything away from K uh, Paige or, or Juju, but it's hard to be Caitlin Clark. I mean, she was so good. She's been so good that it's going to take a, a ton to even be mentioned in the same breath. Not to say that they aren't excellent and they aren't stars themselves, but they don't seem to care about all that. And there doesn't seem to be any bitterness or, you know, in the WNBA, sometimes it feels like people don't even want to mention Clark or the fever or acknowledge that popularity and what it did for the league. Doesn't seem to be the case in the college ranks. You know, Juju has showed love plenty of times. I mean, she was in the, the comment section when Caitlin put out the, the social media post recapping her rookie season. And then her coach, Lindsey Gottlieb, actually talked about seeking the advice of Clark and seeking the advice of Iowa when it comes to Juju's superstar um, and navigating said superstar. This is what she had to say. Coach, how do you help her navigate what will inevitably be a, a season with the spotlight just squarely on her? Yeah. Well, in terms of Juju, the basketball player, I've, I've always felt like one of my biggest um, goals was to almost stay out of the way and let her step into her greatness. Um, and when she did that her freshman year, now with it comes a ton of attention. So. Um, you know, our administration has reached out to Iowa quite a bit and said, OK, tell us what we need to know. You know, some of the things that Caitlin dealt with. I reached out to Caitlin and say, how can I help Juju with this? I feel like it's my job to to make sure that I'm using all the resources. I've tapped into my NBA people saying, OK, when you have someone, you know, who's going to get this much attention, how do you, um, you know, a, keep them safe, but B, allow them to embrace everything that's going on. So those are the resources that I've tried to use. And then it's always just keeping that relationship with her, trying to make sure she's comfortable with me to say when she needs something or when when something isn't going right. But we're, we're all looking forward to the attention and making sure that we're ready to, to, to embrace it. What was the most valuable thing that Caitlin told you about how to help Juju deal with the incredible pressure that we, we saw her deal with first? Yeah. Time? Well, first of all, she was so gracious. She, she literally took my phone and said, here's my number you know, reach out, call me, see how I can help. But essentially she said, I had that level of attention for, you know, she said like a year and a half and she said, Juju's going to have it for three years. Um, so, you know, obviously try to let her get through the WNBA season, take a break and then, you know, really ask her specifically about what she would do the same, what she would do differently. Um, and we, we, we've talked with their program about everything from security to autographs to, you know, making sure we, we maximize this time, but also, you know, keep, keep as a oh. coach, um, you know, <laughs> USC's coach shows there that she's wise. She reaches out to somebody with experience, a program with experience in Iowa, a player in experience with Caitlin Clark to get the lay of the land when it comes to navigating those things. So it's a wise move. Um, it also shows, you know, they realize what a phenomenon Caitlin Clark was, but it's also the ultimate respect to Juju. By the way, it also shows Caitlin's cool people. Again, she's like, here's my number, according to the coach. Uh, hit me up whenever, you know, I, I'd be glad to help Juju in any way. And then it's, it's also props to the star power that Juju could, you know, garner. She already has it to a large extent. She's got a Gatorade deal. Um, she's got the, the much publicized Nike deal. She's got people checking her out when she's out and about in Los Angeles, those sort of things. And it was a good point that, that Clark told Gottlieb, you know, that, yeah, she had it for a year and a half or so, and Juju's going to have it for several years. That's one of the beauties of, or the beautiful things about women's college basketball compared to the men is that you get attached to the story. You get attached to the player. And Juju was just a freshman. She's got several years left before she can get to the WNBA. 
So people are going to be following her USC career and, and be attached to her, um, which is which is great. But along with that comes all the extra stuff. And it seems like they understand how to handle it. They aren't too worried about it. They're reaching out to people who have experience with it, uh, both CC and the, the NBA, as, as USC's coach said. And Juju seems like she's got the, the perfect head on her shoulders to deal with it as well. Um, I, I'm anticipating seeing how she answers the bell because now there's a lot of hype around her. And now there's a lot of people who maybe didn't check her out before who are going to check her out and see what, what Juju Watkins is, is about. So she has a real chance to come into the WNBA as a superstar, to have a real following uh, in the, the college scene. And, you know, if you get some of these matchups, if you were to get USC and Connecticut in the final four or something like that, that would be box office for NCAA women's basketball. And there are going to be other players too. It, it shouldn't just be about those two players. Plenty of other players are going to emerge. I mean, Flage Johnson already feels like a, a superstar for some of the other stuff she does and, and is a good basketball player. Um, Malaysia uh, uh, Fuwali, there, there's a lot of players out there who have a chance to really blossom and, and also take people along for the ride. And then really make a name for themselves too because you've got these other players who are already like on the marquee. What if we, we come and get them? What if we take them out? That sort of mentality that, you know, um, iron sharpens iron kind of mentality that you might see from, from some of the players in NCAA women's basketball. But it, it feels like that shift is happening where the women's collegiate level is getting up to the same level of the men being equal and superior when it comes to star power. I just named some of the players, but even when you talk about the coaches, Gino Oriama, Don Staley, Kim Mulkey, um, many of the coaches more famous than really Hurley's the only one on the men's side I can think of that's kind of in that same breath now with the old guard having moved on on, on the men's side of college basketball. But I, I did find it intriguing to see how much differently it seems the new wave of players and the leadership at the college level seems to view Caitlin Clark and, and the phenomenon that she was and is versus how it's been received in the WNBA, because it only makes sense if you're, you know, you have a player who you're trying to coach and you're trying to guide to reach out to somebody who's been there and done that. And hopefully Juju Watkins has similar success to Caitlin Clark. That'd just be good for the game.